Hey everyone, it's Erin from The Impatient Gardener here and welcome back to my garden, in this case, the vegetable garden, which I've not shown you yet this year. And that's because it's not been a great year in the vegetable garden for me. Um, let's just say I have some goals for next year. It's 100% my fault. I got so involved in other gardens this year that my timing was just off and it just seemed to never be the priority, which was a terrible year to do that, to be honest, because a little more produce would have been good this year. In any case, I am gonna show it to you now, even though I've already pulled out many of the crops, but we'll talk through what I planted, what I'll be doing differently next year. Uh, before we go in, I just wanted you to see the two sides here, um, cause I'm not sure I've ever explained this to you or not. These are all boxwoods, obviously. The goal here is that those will become sort of a cloud pruned hedge of boxwoods. So actually just this morning, I went through and just gave them a quick rough clipping just so that they wouldn't be completely straggly um, but eventually a uh, picture if you're not familiar with cloud pruning just picture a whole bunch of balls all stuck together <laughs> that's what we're aiming for so we'll hope for balls all stuck together sometime um, most of these boxwoods by the way i started from tiny little plugs like ages and ages and ages ago and I grew them in pots and I overwintered them by healing them into the ground for years and then finally last year I planted them and boy did they take off once I stuck them in the ground so should have gotten them out of those pots a little sooner in any case let's go in the garden and go check it out So just a quick overview on the garden in case you've not seen any videos on this space before. I have eight four by eight uh, raised beds in here. They're all about 21 inches tall. And then I have four two and a half by five raised beds in here. And those I use for cut flowers. Um, you might've seen me planting those up when we... Excuse me when we did the sweet pea planting video earlier this year. So let me just uh, walk you through where we're at on here. Well, first off, I'll update you. If you remember, I planted bare root roses in these pots this year. Everything's going really well with those. You can see that I also planted a clematis. I don't think I showed you the, the planting of that, but it is really working its way up and I'm gonna have to go up there and sort of train it to go up over the pergola. That uh, is called Little Boz. Um, and of course I've got some uh, diamond frost euphorbia in here, but the rose uh, did really well. In fact, it's been reblooming. Here's a, here's a bud on this one. Uh, beautiful, beautiful rose. Um, I mean, all roses are my favorite when they're blooming, but it's really a stunner. So this is great. So um, we'll have to, of course, um, overwinter these and maybe we'll do a video on how I'm gonna try to overwinter these roses in these pots even though they are zone five roses and I live in zone five. As long as we're up here at the front, we can do a little update on the pumpkin. Remember how I planted uh, a pumpkin in this pot like way, way, way too late? Well, I think we can still safely say it's still way, way, way too late because um, you'll notice that I've got a very pretty vine working its way up the fence, uh, but I have no pumpkins and in fact, I see a nice little, by the way, there's a cucumber beetle in there, so that's great. Um, I have yet to see, hold on, what's this? Oh my gosh, you guys, just this moment, I think I found my very first female flower on here. So that flower is not open, but maybe tomorrow I can come and help pollinate that. I don't think there's a chance in hell of getting a pumpkin off of this at this stage. If you can believe these are the first beans I've had this year, I planted my beans way, way, way late. So the, the ones on this side, um, I've got some rattlesnake beans going up the trellis, which is the first time I've ever planted a pole bean of any kind. The rest I've always planted bush beans. Um, the purple ones are not great this year for some reason, but the green ones are pretty good. And then when I took out my garlic, I planted more beans over here. So there's beans over here as well. I really love green beans. Um, I mostly just eat them in the garden. This bed is full of beets and kale um, replanted. I actually had such a problem getting things going this year because I had such terrible problems in here with slugs and rabbits. I think I've got the rabbits handled, but as you can see, the slug damage is still an issue on here. So I have yet to have any kale 
or a single beet from my garden. So I replanted those in hopes to get a fall harvest. And the same thing with the peas, I've got to get some support in for these peas, but I did do a fall planting of peas. Um, and I really hope they go well. I missed my peas because I didn't get any of those either. Um, then I've got some more beets in here. So all my peppers were over here. They're all looking very sad, but I got a good harvest of peppers. And I just took out the onions from over here. Oh, and this area where the peas were was potatoes. And I had a terrible year with potatoes. The plants got super tall. I tried to plant them deep and then mound them up. The plants got super tall and then they flopped and it was a big mess and then I just got sick of them and then I harvested them and so I have a few potatoes but I don't think I'm gonna grow potatoes again it was it's not worth the space for what I'm getting out of it to be honest I think we'll do all the vegetable beds before we get to the prettier stuff here this is my herb and cucumber bed herb and cucumber not urban cucumber uh, what a great year for herbs you guys this is, okay, see this? This is the first sign I've seen of any problems on this basil at all. This is Everleaf Emerald Towers Basil. About a month ago, I cut it basically all the way back and had it all made into pesto. And it's all back already. Around that, I've got Arisato Basil. So this is all sort of a um, basil, it's kind of a hedge. That basil is delicious too. I've just been so lucky with basil. Got parsley behind it, which I've been trying to cut and save and freeze as it keeps going. And then of course I've got lots of rosemary and thyme and I haven't used much of it at all this year. Um, boy, I've never had my thyme grow that well before either. So I maybe I'll dry it this year, I'm not sure. Um, but I should start, it's time to start you know, saving some of these things. Uh, I'm planting two types of cucumbers this year. One is um, the one I grow all the time, which is Chelsea, and the other one is sort of an experimental one, I think. I only like these long, skinny cucumbers anymore. It's the only type I grow anymore. They're basically seedless. They have been so good. Um, here's one that's pretty close to ready to be harvested. They, they have been absolutely, oh, I've got two more down here. Fortunately, I don't know which ones are which because I was terrible about labeling, but they both taste the same to me and really good, so. Okay, this is my squash bed, um, which has been pretty successful. I've got a lot of baby butternuts coming in here. I mean, you can see all of them in there doing their thing. Last year, um, was the first time I ever grew a winter squash and it turned out to be my favorite thing I got from the garden. So this year I did a lot more. Finally, <laughs> just in case you were curious, that is literally only the third zucchini I've had this year. <laughs> um, I don't know what kind of squash this is. Um, I need to look it up because I think it's almost time to harvest it. It's not a pumpkin. It's more like an acorn type squash, I think. And then I've got, I think this is a honey nut squash. Um, I'm not entirely sure and I can't really tell. I mean, I know I have a honey nut squash tag, but it's hard to tell where the plants are coming because I just tuck the vines in around and just keep tucking them in. Okay, so this, the tomatoes couldn't look worse. I have definitely gotten to the part where I'm just cutting away the diseased parts. I mean, there are no more tomatoes coming. So all I'm trying to do at this point is just ripen the ones that are there. They don't really need leaves to do that. So um, it looks pretty reprehensible over here, but I think you can get an idea. We've ha we have had a very good year in terms of getting tomatoes to ripen. Some years I'm left with oodles of green tomatoes at the end of the year. Just a couple to now I picked everything yesterday. I had huge bowls of tomatoes yesterday, which is why which was silly. I should have filmed the video and then pick the tomatoes, but I didn't do that. So I had a huge harvest yesterday, so there's not a lot left on here to, to look at. But these yellow ones, this is um, tomato apple yellow, and it's really good. It's a really firm tomato, um, not like a hard skin tomato, just the whole thing is really firm. It's not super, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's not like a lot of gel in it. Um, quite flavorful for a yellow. Sometimes I don't like yellows. This is a yellow that I feel like tastes a little bit more like a red um, and, and highly prolific. Um, that I think is a, an 
All-America Selection winner. I'll put that on the screen because I'm not sure. Um, the other All-America Selection winner that I tried this year is um, Tomato Early Resilience. It's a um, it's a plum type tomato, so it's not really like a raw eating tomato. It's uh, you know something you would you would cook with, and it has been so prolific. It has done so well. Um, I've been roasting them and freezing them because I don't know what to do with with this abundance. And I, sorry you guys, I love tomatoes, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna eat this one really quick. Not that this is much to look at, but these two tomatoes right here are Brandy Fred. It's a dwarf tomato, meaning the plant is dwarf, but the tomatoes are the same size. That's quite good. It's obviously got um, brandy wine in its parentage. Unfortunately, I don't know what tomato this is, but it's very good because the label has worn off. Apparently, navy blue Sharpie doesn't hold fast to the sun. This is called dwarf awesome tomato. Really tasty. Um, it's another yellow, but it gets a, it gets this beautiful striation of red on it. It's a gorgeous tomato. Um, really delicious. I will grow that again for sure. And by the way, I really enjoy growing these dwarf tomatoes, you guys. They don't get eight feet tall, but you still get big tomatoes on them. Um, so I quite like that a lot. And then there's not much to show here, but uh, this is a favorite too. So this tomato is called Red Torch. And um, it's kind of a stripy tomato, and I don't know what size you'd call this. It's certainly maybe like a cocktail tomato. Um, very good for eating raw and also cooking with. Really yummy. I grew that last year, and it was so good I grew it again. Okay, so you guys you might remember when I planted up the sweet peas, and I had this problem where the tulips were here. Um, the sweet peas were okay. Most of them are done. Here's one. Oh, here's one. This might be the last sweet pea left. Um, I'm telling you, if you have never grown sweet peas and you live in a climate where you can, think about doing it because I truly think this is the most heavenly scent on the planet. Anyways, they grew not as well as they did last year. It was really got really hot this year, which of course sweet peas don't love. So last year we stayed cool the whole year and I had great sweet peas. So you either get you know a really nice summer or you get great sweet peas. You can't have both. I got lots of these um, Green Envy Zinnies, Zinnias uh, in here. Um, which are gorgeous flowers, especially in a bouquet of bright colors. They're fabulous. Um, I grew, apparently, a ton of those. They seem to be everywhere. Um, I also have some of the Emerald Falls Amaranth, which is really great for tucking in bouquet. I mean, look at this one right here. I mean, I'm not sure you can see how long, long those dreadlocks are, but um, so cool for tucking in bouquets. I grew straw flowers for the first time this year. And they are really cute and really neat. So I'm gonna do that again. Now here's something I'm probably not gonna grow again. This is an amaranth. I think this was a floret purchase. This was an amaranth I got. Um, it's called Hot Biscuits. Um, maybe I just don't grow the right color flowers to work with this, but I don't, I don't know that I want flowers that look dead, which just kind of looks dead. So. Maybe in a fall bouquet, this would be really pretty. But again, since I didn't make any plan whatsoever for cut flowers, um, that was sort of a failure. Okay, let's talk about one of my favorite parts of this garden, the stock tank pond. Highly controversial. Some people really hate it. Um, I like it. I think it's, I have so much fun with it. I have so much fun with it because I have no idea what I'm doing in here as I, as I made clear in a video last year. Um, I'm just learning about water plants and it's fun to learn about new plants. Now this is um, an arrowhead that I did over winter um, just by pulling the pot and tucking it into one of the raised beds. Um, and it actually was looking pretty good until just recently. It's starting to look pretty bad. Um, and then this year I did a new water lily. So um, this is actually a tropical water lily. So let me get you a close up of it because it's pretty spectacular. Okay, so last year I grew a hardy water lily and I tried to overwinter it in the garden just by tucking that pot in and it didn't make it through. So this year I decided to try a tropical water lily because the flowers get held up higher out of the water, which I think is prettier, and you can have more than one flower at a time, which you won't get with a hardy water lily. So um, this year I did this one. Um, I can't remember the name. I actually ordered so late that I couldn't get the one I wanted, so this was actually uh, something they had left. So uh, 
but it has this sort of interesting yellow color with a maybe just a like a hint of green to it this beautiful center so the real reason I went for this water lily is because of those mottled leaves which I think is so pretty um, granted they don't they only look mottled like that when they first come out which I didn't really realize um, but just I like to try new things and this was this was fun now, of course, we can't forget about what's growing on the sides, which is an apple on this side and a pear on the other. Um, terrible harvest this year. I think we've talked about this already. I'm only going to have three apples. I've got two of them uh, in these little protective bags. Um, the other one that's not in a bag looks like it's doing okay. Um, but I'll enjoy them nonetheless. I am starting to get a couple more strawberries. And there are some raspberries down here as well. Now, speaking of flowers, we're gonna do something different this year. Instead of planting tulips in the raised beds, I'm going to plant them all along, all along the sides here. And I've got a special plan for what's gonna go where, but I think it's gonna be, obviously we've got some weed encroachment under the fence there, but uh, this will all be tulips. In the ground this year because I think I've got the rabbit problem solved hopefully by the way this is the rabbit solution right here they were digging underneath the fence so I bought this galvanized thing I got this from Petco I think it's actually to keep dogs from digging under fences but obviously it works for rabbits too so that's what I did to solve that the other alternative was digging a trench and putting in chicken wire all the way around which I probably should have done from the get-go but that seemed like just a terrible job to do. So I know you guys are interested in another Belgian fence update, and I have one for you. It's going really well. Some of the upright branches, as you would expect, are growing faster than the others. That's how trees grow. They grow, they wanna put the energy into growing up. So this one is actually almost to the top of the fence. So, um, which is where I will stop it, is roughly at the top of the fence. But even some of the other branches you can see are, more than halfway up the fence. This is far more growth than I anticipated they would put on this year, so I'm really pleased with that. Now I do have a couple that have suffered some. Um, this one has kind of been a little slow. It looks healthy, but it's been slow, and there was a rabbit problem on this one. Fortunately, they do seem to re-sprout, so in the few places where I've had a rabbit come and take a branch, um, I've been able to uh, resurrect that with no problem, and they'll be a little bit behind, but uh, it should really be no problem in the long term, I don't think. I mean, I've even got some places like right here where they are starting to cross already. Uh, same on this one. I actually have a spare branch on this one that I'll need to cut out. I've been leaving a few spare branches just to have them there in case there's a rabbit problem. Uh, this one is really going for it. So there's another ones um, that are doing well. Uh, this one was... Um, eaten off by a rabbit and you can see that even that is almost to the joint so um, it's it's been really you're really I'm pleasantly surprised at how well this is growing this year so thanks for hanging out with me in my vegetable garden today I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to show it to you earlier this year um, and I'm really sorry I didn't do a better job in it I think you know some years are just like that so next year I won't be building a new garden I hope I will be paying really close attention to making a better plan for my vegetable garden and for the cut flower area. Um, and in the meantime, I am going to start freezing and doing wonderful things with all this basil because it is fabulous. I hope you guys had a great year in your vegetable garden and a great day in your garden in general. And we'll see you soon. Thanks much. Still there smiling